that's the other one of the other big questions everyone wants to know about. Where are we uh, with the discussions? Have you had informal negotiations at this point? When will they start to, to ramp up? Where are we right now with Sure, that? Doug. So, of course, they, we, we've started discussions. Uh, they've been formal. There have been uh, a number of, of meetings with uh, the league uh, uh, management and the, uh, the leadership of, of the players' union, including some players. Uh, uh, this process now is just the beginning phases. Every league goes through it, went, went through it five years ago and the, and the agreement prior to that. Uh, it's sort of talking about what our respective priorities are. And uh, that's where we are at this moment. Uh, there will likely be an, um, another meeting in December, and then we'll get down to the negotiations in earnest. And I'm confident that uh, we'll be able to reach an agreement that will be good for the league and be good for the players. Uh, I will say the dynamic is one uh, that I would describe as positive. Uh, we, uh, we have informed the players in a very transparent way that the league isn't performing financially the way we would like. Uh, I think they accept that and understand that. Uh, at the same time, I think there are a wide variety of things that are important. I remember expectations were, I think, off from the beginning for a big part of the player pool. I remember we had a, a meeting as a group, um, you know, a month or two before uh, the actual negotiations, you know, right at the start of the off season, And we did an exercise where you kind of pulled the players on – you know, what they thought the salary cap should be. And that's a tricky question. What do you want it to be versus what realistically should it be? Yeah. Yeah. I, that negotiation, honestly, is like the hardest. Well, the end. Again, we were in federal mediation. Um, like the hardest week of my life, in a, in a way. Um, or ranks up there as some of the hard, one of the hardest weeks of my life because of how contentious it was how split we were i can remember i felt like these negotiations are being live streamed um and that's that's you know that's you don't want that you can't you know i can't negotiate a collective bargaining agreement if every word coming out of my mouth is going to be in the press and every vote that we take and every internal caucus that we that we have to to, to discuss things if you can't be candid because you got to worry about it being in the press, and so we had a little bit. We had some of that dynamic, um, and it made it made for a difficult, difficult negotiation. Yeah, there were aspects of it. I think I actually like take offense at people that sort of have shared some of the stuff that I don't feel like should have been shared, and I certainly will not do that, even though some of it was. Um, but yeah, people in that room knew what happened and what went down, and. It's, I think it's still best left unsaid, but that's not to say it's unlearned. Like you do, uh, you do learn a lot in moments like that. The 2015 CBA was definitely the most difficult CBA that we've had, at least from my perspective. Uh, but I think from most everybody who was involved, um, one of the reasons that it was so difficult was we had gotten to a size as a league and there had been enough success uh, that we were able to demand real change and real benefits. Um, and we encountered a league that was intent upon running the exact same playbook they had always run, which which really revolved around delay, um, delay, 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 until the deadline uh, of the expiring CBA and and daring the players to to pull the trigger and 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 have a work stoppage. Um, and it's part of the league strategy as well. Let's wear these guys out and just they're gonna they're gonna buckle, they're gonna bend. Um and and that that week was was really tough. I was playing for Chicago at the time. I remember two young players kind of came with um me as, as part of representatives for our team and they were great. But it was it was so difficult. Um so the problem was the pace of the negotiations. Just nothing happened uh, in the lead up to the final couple of weeks. So we got to those last couple of weeks with a lot of ground to cover. And that's not an easy thing to do in negotiations. You know, the last days of that negotiation were long days, long nights. Um, I mean, literally all night, 48 hours straight, I think, to, to get the deal done. At the at the F, Federal Mediation Conciliation Service FMCS's office, so we had the same 
dynamic in 2015. Um, we had a different mediator. Um, and, you know, I, I guess the first, first of all, the league's position in 2015, they didn't, they, they took some really, I, I thought, some positions that I, that I knew they weren't going to insist on. And, and they held them, you know, longer than I thought was appropriate, longer than they did in 2010. So we, you know, we literally, in 2015, there was a time when I was certain we weren't going to have a deal and we were going on strike. In fact, we had voted to go on strike. And that was primarily over the league's insistence on an eight-year deal. At the end of the day, you, you don't want to strike. That's not what you're hoping for. Um, I do think there was a faction of players that wanted a strike no matter what and felt as if we didn't go on a lengthy strike that we sort of failed or we didn't uh, accomplish you know, what we needed to accomplish. I think that's where the misunderstanding or at least difference of opinion, whether it's a misunderstanding or not. I think that was a difference of opinion of, of a lot of players. And, um, you know, ultimately a strike is very damaging. Um, and it's damaging for the league, uh, for the players. Ultimately, I'm glad it got figured out. I'm glad that it didn't come to a work stoppage. Yes, maybe people are upset. Um, these are hard, really difficult negotiations. You're trying to, from a player standpoint, appease hundreds and hundreds of players from Don's standpoint and he's trying to appease 30 billionaires think about how difficult that is it's not an easy task and ultimately to get to consensus I think is a huge win what we really had to get and knew we had to get was the principle of free agency established that's incredibly challenging because it's a huge issue on the other side of the table uh, the philosophical issues are always the toughest to negotiate, um, the most challenging issues. Uh, and the reality of our situation from a leverage point of view was we weren't going to be able to crack that sort of brick foundation on which they'd built in the league, built the league, while also getting significant, you know, actual gains within the free agency system. So we almost had to take it on the chin in 2015 to break through what they had been saying for 20 years at that point, which is we will never, ever, ever have any kind of free agency. The economics are always the main thing. But in 2015, free agency was a huge topic of conversation. We wanted to get some semblance of free agency because up until that point, it didn't exist. We ended up getting for agency. And, and actually, when you look at the 2015 deal, there are certain foundational pieces, elements, if you will, that set us up for a better deal going forward. And I think that's the idea, is that it may be incremental, but even anything groundbreaking, anything that changes the game, that sets you up for the next deal, it's a win. The thing that you kind of learn over time in a PA is you're working with a bunch of guys who live on competition competition's binary it's like do we win or do we lose and um it doesn't always come out that way um and something that we we always said and i think that came up a lot in the 2015 negotiation was um a good deal both parties walk away and feel like they lost it was something that they didn't want to give on either and so for us to be in a situation where maybe we didn't end up where we hoped to be with the economics. At least we got something that they weren't even considering. And then with each iteration, it just gets better and better. And then what happens is the league realizes this isn't as bad as we thought. We can actually give more. And what happens is they don't even need labor negotiation for that to take place. They just do it. So how do you tangibly measure that? How do you quantify that as a win? It's challenging. But if you're around long enough and you have that perspective of let's leave this better than we found it, free agency is one of those things that you can point to. The league, I don't think, really ever intended to, to give up on that principle in that negotiation. Uh, so consequently, when we were able to break through because the players stuck together and, and were very, very forceful, uh, I think in the league's mind, in the bargaining committee on the management side's mind at least, 
they didn't want to give anything more financially because they had just given something in terms of rights that they hadn't intended to give. So they drew a hard line on finances in a way that really didn't make any sense for them uh, and made it a much worse deal for us. Um, the truth is they had to spend more money than they put on the table in that deal. And they went out and did spend more money uh, in the upcoming CBA. And I think the first and maybe only instance I've ever heard of of an employer outspending the negotiated numbers in a collective bargaining agreement uh, in the sports world. It, it, it was a tough negotiation, took its toll. And then, you know, the league ends up outspending the deal right in line with what our offer was. They had this money that they had to spend. They knew they had to spend it. They refused to put it on the table in the negotiation. They held on to this eight-year deal forever. The free agency piece, you know, that we were asking for wasn't the end of the world. It would have, you know, it worked and we ended up working it out. There were caps on it and there were all kinds of things, but it was free agency and we had cracked it. It is important throughout this process and, and it is a years long process, seasons long process that you're able to take inventory and, and say, yeah, this is before this deal, there wasn't free agency after this deal. It's a free agency that we can live with because then the next deal is only going to make it better and better and better. And it was the same for the economics. You know, at the time, the financials uh, didn't feel great. Um, but in that five-year span, sort of blew away even the projections of where, uh, you know, the players' union thought and hoped it was going to get. Uh, the league injected more money into the system very quickly on their own outside of the CBA. They were never going to do that uh, on free agency, on player rights. That's why we went after uh, the player rights and the free agency, because we knew that that wasn't going to happen. And the money, which they had held back, uh, was a tool that ultimately they were going to spend. They wanted to spend and they needed to spend it. Uh, so that, you know, ultimately we felt very, you know, in a way vindicated by that decision and uh, very proud of the work we did to, you know, to fight for those rights. So it was super intense. I think it was... Uh, an incredibly valuable experience for anybody who dealt with that intensity. Um, I think you learn a lot about others. I think you also learn a lot about yourself and how you deal with really high pressure situations. And when you're talking about when people refer to high pressure situations, there aren't many higher pressure situations than when you're talking about paychecks and labor stoppages and things like that. So for me, it was uh, not to sound like I was in it selfishly for the personal experience, but it was it it was super intense. I'm grateful after the fact for the experience. Um, as I say, you learn a lot about yourself. You learn a lot about others. And for me, the whole process and when there is division, by definition, there is a difference of opinion. And I think what you learn there is how diverse the league is, how you try to find some overlap of unity despite some very disparate opinions and to do so in a way that represents your constituents in the best possible way, which I wholeheartedly believe was absolutely the focus of all of the staff and the leadership at that period of time. Yeah, what you have to do is, is find the best common ground that protects as many people as possible um like i always describe it it's like you know it's a scatter plot people are all over the place and what you're trying to do is draw the straightest line through as many points as possible or get everyone as close to that line as possible and your dot by the way might be like way down in the corner um and that's that's just the nature of it the reality for us as soccer players and people in soccer industry is we needed the sport to grow or else it was going to die we weren't major league baseball or the nfl or the nba that was stable and not going anywhere we all had to work together and i think when negotiations got tough and difficult i think everybody still remembered in the back of the minds okay we cannot let this fall apart and that led to to great things people forget the day after the cba is ratified you got to work together so we're trying to build the league 